Hello, my name is Abiodun Anifoshe. I'll be teaching you organic chemistry. And today we're going to start with the introduction to aquas and phenol. There are different kinds of compounds in organic chemistry. Based on the functional groups that are present in the compounds, we have classified them into different classes. We have the alkanes, the alkenes, the alkynes. We have the aldehydes and the ketones. We have the alcohols and the phenols. We have the carboxylic acid and the derivatives. We have the amine. We have the amino acids and the peptides. We have carbohydrates. We have different classes of organic compounds in organic chemistry. But we are going to start with alcohols and phenol. And this is just going to be an introduction to alcohol and phenol. And we're going to start by looking at what makes this compound alcohol and what makes them phenol. So basically, there is something we call the, the OH group, which is called the hydroxyl group. It is called the hydroxyl group. So in organic chemistry, when you see the functional group OH, linked to any group then you know that we have an alcohol or a phenol depending on the group that it is linked to so we can represent the group as r and then we have oh linked to it or we have an aryl group and we have oh linked to it in this case we say we have an alcohol in this case we say we have a phenol and I've summarized that on the sticky note to the left of the board. As you can see, this is the OH group, the hydroxyl group. And then this is ROH, which is, in this case, the R is used to denote alkyl group. In organic chemistry, as you may know, when we say we have an alkyl group, we are basically talking about, we're basically talking about this group here which can be CH3, it could be CH3, CH2, and it can be a long alkyl group chain. And when we have the aryl group, we're basically talking about this group, the benzene group, the benzene group that has one of the hydrogen atom removed because it's, it, it, is, it, is, uh, it is serving as a substituent in this case. So we, we're not having, instead of having the benzene, which is CH, which is C6H6, we are now having, we are now having C6H5. So this is used to denote an aryl group, and it is written this way for short. And then you can say AROH which is used to denote a phenol. So in this case, we use, we use um, ROH to denote alcohol and we use AROH to denote phenol. And as you can see, we have different kinds of alcohols. In organic chemistry, we have a lot of compounds that are classed as alcohol. Just look out for the OH group when you see the OH group, then you know that the compound can be classed, can be classified as alcohol. And in this case, we have ethanol with a CH3, CH2, OH as the molecular formula. Also, just so we are on the same page, when you see something like this in organic chemistry, when you see something like this in organic chemistry, like I said, this is ethanol and it's just in the skeletal form this way so we can break it down so that we know what this is made up of so if we are to write the molecular formula of this it's the same thing as ch3 ch2 oh so this is ethanol but this is the skeletal form so but most in most cases you're not going to see the formula as this you're just you're just going to see the skeletal formula of the compound you are dealing with so in this case we have ethanol and ethanol it's it's a common uh compound common alcohol that is often used in the industry and also in making the popular alcohol that we drink 
and we also see here cyclopentanol so this is a cyclic uh, alcohol cyclic because it's a closed ring here it's an alkyl group though but it is closed so it is a cyclopentanol we have five carbon atom one two three four five then this carbon has an hydroxyl group attached to it so this is ethanol this is cyclopentanol they are both alcohols and there are a number of alcohols that are found in natural products as we can see here we have grandisol grandisol is a natural product that is it's actually a hormone that is found in the male uh, cutting bowl weevil <coughs> it is the cess <coughs> excuse me it is a cess hormone that is found in the male cutting bowl weevil it's an alcohol as you can see the hydrosyl group that is in the uh, in the uh, molecular formula of the the molecular structure of the compound this is the compound called gradisol and in most cases if you are dealing with an alcohol you will for the most part you will have the compound name end in ol the compound name in most cases for alcohol we end in ol in the surface ol even though we've not talked about these ones these ones here you can see already this ends in ol chloramphenicol this ends in ol geranium they are both alcohols as well and the chloramphenicol this chloramphenicol it's used as antibiotics it is isolated from streptomycin venezuela so this is a compound that is extracted from natural source it is used as antibiotic it's an alcohol and this one geraniol it's often used in making perfume it is isolated from roses and geranium so it's also an alcohol as you can see the hydrosyl group here so these compounds are all alcohols and you can see phenol it's a little bit different from the alcohol even though it also has the hydrosyl group as you can see here we have the hydrosyl group but then instead of us having just an alkyl group most times you see alkyl group like i said earlier represented by a ch and the ch can be ch3 ch3 can be ch3 ch2 i mean the alkyl group can be ch3 um, it can be ch3 uh, ch it can be any it can be a short alkyl group or a long alkyl group so basically alkyl group can be any combination of carbon and hydrogen atom that are linked together and mostly saturated but you could also have unsaturated alkyl group that is they have alkene and the alkyne or the alkyne in their structure so like i said you can have unsaturated okay i don't even need to draw so you see this one geranium in this case we have the alkyl group like this and this is the hydrosyl group so we said alcohols are always like this so we have the alkyl group and the oh group so in the case of geranium this is the alkyl group i mean sorry this is the hydrosyl group and this is the alkyl group and this alkyl group in this case it's an unsaturated alkyl group because it has double bonds the double bonds makes it an unsaturated compound so that is that about that so like i said in the case of phenol in the case of phenol instead of having alkyl group we have an aryl group we have an aryl group and it's just a benzene ring Phenol is just a benzene ring that is linked to an hydrosyl group. As you can see here, you can trace, you can trace my pointer to the board. So you see, the hydrosyl group is directly linked to one of the carbon atoms in the benzene ring. And that makes this a phenol. That makes this a phenol. So we have other phenol or derivatives of derivatives of phenol and uh, compounds from natural sources that are uh, derivatives of phenol and I have listed a few examples here you can see dopamine dopamine is actually 
a is a derivative of catechol a minor catechol so in chemistry when we say catechol catechol is is also itself is a derivative of phenol so when we have something like this we say we have catechol this is catechol a catechol will be a benzene ring that has two hyd hydroxyl group linked to two of the carbons uh, carbon atoms in the ring <coughs> excuse me so this is catechol this is amino catechol and it is called dopamine dopamine is very important to human brain and the body it is both a hormone and a neurotransmitter it is responsible for most of the uh, things that goes on in the brain and uh, it's something that is that has been said to be absent in Parkinson diseases so uh, dopamine is also an alcohol that is present in uh, natural products I mean that is a natural product also capsaicin capsaicin the compound here is called capsaicin it's also a natural product and it's 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 been found to be responsible for the spicy hot flavor that is found in uh, chili it is responsible for the spicy hot flavor found in chili and it is this compound it is called alcohol I mean it is an alcohol it's an alcohol so so also this compound here it's an alcohol it's obtained from natural source and in fact this is obtained from uh, from the uh, well-known marijuana this is obtained from the well-known marijuana it's also an alcohol it is called tetrahydrocannabinol tetrahydrocannabinol abbreviated to THC so this compound is actually it's 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 been found to be the uh the psychoactive uh drug in marijuana this compound here it's the psychoactive drug uh, that is found in marijuana it's it's also a natural product and as you can see all these compounds are alcohol among a plethora of alcohols that we have in nature in both plants and animal we have a lot of alcohol so this the study of alcohols and phenol is uh, is worthwhile and so we're going to move to the nomenclature of alcohol nomenclature of alcohol in chemistry we talk about nomenclature because it is very important and nomenclature simply means that uh, how do we name these compounds how what are the rules that guide us to naming this compound the compound of interest how do we name it so in this case our compounds of interest are the alcohols and phenol but mostly we're going to look at the nomenclature of alcohol in this chapter I mean in this um, uh, in this lecture but we're going to be looking uh, at the nomenclature of phenol uh, in, 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 in detail later later on in in the future lecture because of space limitation and time limitation and so let's just jump into the nomenclature of alcohol so the first thing you look out for is the parent's name what is the parent's name of the structure you are dealing with so i have listed okay let me just go through all the rules before we start um, analyzing how we use those rules and what we look out for so the first rule is the first rule is to identify the parent name which must include the carbon atom to which the hydroxyl group is attached you identify the parent name including the carbon atom to which the hydroxyl group is attached the second thing is to number the alkane ch the alkane chain starting from the end close to the hydroxyl group i will explain all that in a moment the third thing you do is to number the substituents and place substituent locants before the parent's name. Then the last thing is to uh, is that the OH locants should be placed just because just before the parent name or the suffix OL. And what we mean by locant is just the, the location of that particular group in the structure, in the molecular structure of the compound in question. So how do we apply this rule? 
Let, let's take a look at this example. This is an alcohol. It's actually pentanol. So based on the first rule, it says identify the parent name. Usually the parent name is derived from the longest carbon to carbon chain in the molecule. And in this case, if we look at the compound, the longest carbon is actually five. As we can count it, one, two, three, four, five. That is five carbon atoms. There is no other way to count this, the carbon atoms in this molecule. And actually, you can see that we already included the OH group in our counting because it's just a straight chain compound. So it is simply pentanol. This compound is simply pentanol. So this compound is um, pentanol. I'm trying to avoid this thing from removing from my cloth. So this is my microphone. <laughs> okay, so this is pentanol. It is one, two, three, four, five carbon atoms. It is easy to identify and it is pentanol. And uh, I believe we remember, and if we don't, we remember the how we name carbon atoms in our cane. We have the, uh, the methane, ethane, uh, propane, butane, pentane, hexane, heptane, octane, nonane, and decane. So, so just so we're on the same page. But if you don't remember, you can quickly brush up on arcane chemistry. But I will be talking about arcane chemistry uh, later on. So let's move to this one in appreciation of the rules of naming alcohol. This compound, we're trying to name it. The first rule is to identify the parent name. So what is the parent name here? We said we have to look, look out for the longest carbon to carbon chain. If we start counting, we can take a look at it this way. We say one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That seems to be the longest carbon to carbon chain. But does it include the hydroxyl group in its in uh, in the non-brain? The answer is no, because the carbon that is carrying the hydroxyl group is not in any of these carbon atoms that we have numbered, that we have counted. This is the carbon bearing the hydroxyl group, and so it must be included in our nomenclature, in our straight longest carbon to carbon chain that we're going to include in naming this compound. And so we're going to disregard this uh, direction. We're not going to follow, we're not going to follow, we're not going to include this. We can actually include it, but we're going to actually make sure that we include this carbon. That is the goal. So we can either go this way, or we go this way, whichever one is longer. So if we go this way, it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, six carbon atoms. If we start this way, it's going to be one, two, three, four, five. That is five carbon atoms. So which is the longest? This one, of course, including the hydroxyl group. So this would be, so then it would be one, two, three, four, five, six. And that means our longest carbon to carbon atoms in this uh, compound is, let me write it here. It's a uh, hexane. But let me just remove the E because we don't intend to have E in an alcohol because it's an alcohol, it's, it's going to end in OL. It is going to be maybe hexane, whatever all. The the hull we have its own position that is what is the position of the of the oh group that is where the uh the locant comes in we're going to get to that so it's going to be hexanol but then are we going to start from here or are we going to start from here now that we have established that this compound has to be like this the straight chain or the longest chain has to include all this carbon are we going to start from here or start from here? Now, the answer to that is found in the second rule of nomenclature of alcohol, which states that number the alkane chain starting from the end close to the hydroxyl group, which suggests that we are supposed to start from here. And so, to start from here will make us have something like this. One, two, three, four, Five, six. So that means we're going to start from here and that puts 
the locant of the OH group as 1. That is, the location of the OH group is what? Is the number 1 carbon. And any other thing that branch out of the longest carbon to carbon chain will be uh, a substituent. It's going to become a substituent. So, in this case, this is a substituent. And this is the longest carbon to carbon chain. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. But actually, we're starting from here. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, this is exam 1 all. So, this is exam 1 all. I'll just write it here. Exam 1 all. But that is the parent's name. There is another, there is a substituent here. This substituent is a 3 carbon alkyl group. And a 3 carbon alkyl group is going to be called what? It's going to be called propyl. So the substituent is propyl hexanoid. I mean, it's propyl. It's propyl. But we're not just going to write propyl hexanoid, hexanol, because the propyl location has to be included in the name of this compound. So the, how do we know the location of this propyl substituents? It's easy. So we just take a look at the numbering. We started from here, one, two, three, four, five, six. So this, no, this second carbon is the one that is bearing the substituent propyl group. And so it becomes two propyl hexanol, hexan one all. Two propyl hexan one all. And what that means is that we have a propyl substituent on the second carbon in this molecule. And the second carbon in this molecule, according to the nomenclature rule of alcohol, is this carbon. And the OH group is, according to the nomenclature rule of alcohol, is located on the first carbon. So it's going to be exan one all. And according to the uh, number, the, the fourth rule, the OH locants should be placed just before the parent name or the surface OL. That means that this compound name, this name here, can be rewritten. We can also write it this way. So for this compound that we named as 2 propyl hexanol, hexan, hexan 1 hull, we can also, so we can either write it as 2 propyl hexan 1 hull or we say 2-propyl, 2-propyl, 2-exanol. So we can, oh sorry, 2-propyl, 1-exanol. That is one that we have here. So because the OH group is attached to the first carbon atom in the parent structure of the molecule. So either 2-propyl, exan one all or 2-propyl, one hexanol is correct. Both of them are correct. So, uh, also if we if we have just one, if the position of the OH group is one, we can just remove the one and just say we have two propyl hexanol without the one. And when you write it like this, what you're saying is that the OH group is located on the first carbon atom in the molecule. And that's, that's that about that. So, in appreciation of this uh, rule of, of naming alcohol further, we're going to look at this molecule that we have uh, drawn here. So, if you look at this, we have an hydrosyl group attached to the second carbon atom that is starting from here. But if we start from here, this hydrosyl group is going to be found on the sixth carbon atom. So, so in appreciation of that, uh, second rule of naming alcohol, which, which, which one do you think is correct and which one is wrong? So, to appreciate the second rule of naming alcohol, we will say that this is right and this is wrong because this starts from the side that is closest to the hydrosyl group, whereas this starts fr counting from the side that is further, further away from the hydrosyl group. Starting from here, we put this OH as, at, let's count the not longest carbon to carbon chain. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So we can say the longest carbon to carbon chain is 7. 
if we go this way it will also be seven so we can go this way because in this case we actually need to include this alkene functional group we'll talk about that about our preference when we get to the alkene chemistry so we're going to include this and then it's going to be it's going to be seven carbon atoms in this chain and that we put this compound as ectane all ectane all because we have an alkene group here but then the whole will be the preference here will take more priority and that will put this compound as the all we end in the all this compound will end in uh two all whereas this one we end, naming it from this side we put this oh as one two three four five six six all so we'll take this one over this we'll take two all over six all and that makes this uh, nomenclature correct that is starting from this direction instead of this direction and if we look at the next one let me let me uh, cancel this but I'll just still leave the structure just for reference purpose we say this is right this is wrong if we look at this one this is actually three pentanol because either way this hydroxyl group will be on the third carbon atom one two three one two three so that puts this uh, hydroxyl group on the third carbon atom and then the name of this compound become three becomes three pentanol or you say yeah that, that is it here or you say pentane three hull pentane three hull so either of these is right or we say both of these is right so anyone you want to use but i prefer to go with this because it tells anyone that is looking at this this compound name that the oh group is on the third position even though th this says the same things but i th uh, the same thing but i think that is personal preference so talking about the nomenclature of cyclic alcohol for cyclic alcohol the carbon that is bearing the hydroxyl group they automatically take precedence over other carbon so that means that you are going to start naming the compound from that particular carbon so this automatically become one and the rest you know it continues like that and also you can look you can consider the substituents such that the substituent has a lower value a lower number for the locants that is the number that you're going to use to locate the compound it has to be the smallest possible okay let me cite an example so I appreciate that So, to appreciate what I just talked about, let's say we have something like this. Oh no, I want something with seven carbon atoms. Let's say we have something like this. Now this is how many carbon atoms? We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, yeah. So, this automatically become number one carbon and we can say two, three, four, five, six, seven. If we go this way, this compound name is going, okay, the parent name for this compound, first of all, the parent name for this compound, let's slow down here. <laughs> the parent name for this compound has to be derived first. And that will be the longest carbon to carbon chain. If we look at it, since it's a cyclic structure, it's, a, it's seven carbon atom. And that put this compound parent name as cyclopentanol cyclopentanol but then because the uh, the carbon bearing the OH group has to take the press the uh, precedence over any other carbon so that makes this cyclo I mean sorry not cyclopentanol it's seven carbon atom that is cycloheptanol. Hept is for seven. Five uh, pent is for five. So in this case, we have seven carbon atoms, and that makes it heptanol, cycloheptanol. So then we have a substituent. This substituent is an is a methyl group. We have two methyl atoms. I mean, two methyl groups here. We have one here. We have one here. So we have 
two methyl groups we have to name them also naming them in the sense that we have to represent them by their location in the name of this compound so if we are looking at it this way we can if we are naming it this way it will put this uh going th go following this direction we put this compound this locant on the sixth position six carbon atom and that will be six six dimethyl cycloheptanol but according to the nomenclature the rule we can't follow that direction we have to give the substrate a location that is the the least location number possible and that means that we have to go uh, follow this direction and that will put this uh, this substrate on the third carbon atom that means we have one two three so this will be the will be the third carbon going this way but going this way this will be the sixth carbon so we have to go this way so that we have this substrate on the third carbon and that will make this substrate to be on the third position and that will give give this compound uh the name three three dimethyl cycloheptanol so that will be the name of the compound let me write it here I'll write it here. Three, three, dimethyl cyclopentanol. Oh, sorry. Why do I keep writing pentanol? Oh gosh. Okay, cycloheptanol. Hept because we have seven carbon atoms. So three, three dimethyl. That is we have. A methyl substituent on the three on the third carbon atom and not just one methyl we have two methyl groups and they are both on that same carbon and that's why we have to repeat the three we have to say the three twice because there are two methyl group on that one carbon atom and that makes it three three dimethyl cycloheptanol if you have any concern or any question uh, relating nomenclature of alcohol you can uh, ask me uh, if this video gets to YouTube. You can ask me in the comment section uh, if it's wherever it's the video find itself. You can ask me. I believe there's there's going to be a comment to interact on the platform that I will probably be posting it on. So that said, let's look at the next thing here, which is the glycol. So this compound is glycol. So I just put it, this here to tell you that we can have more than one OH group, more than one hydroxyl group, more than one alcohol group in a compound. And this is an example. It has two OH group. It's called glycol. So it's a, it's, sometimes it, uh, some people can call it ethylene glycol because it's made from ethylene. Ethyl, it's made from ethylene and uh, it has o, two OH group. Uh, so this is glycol. We also we can also have three OH group in one single molecule, like the uh, glycerol. Glycerol. Uh, so we have, you know, it's possible to have multiple uh, OH group in a compound, just like this one. We have two OH group in this uh, molecule, chloramphenicol, and the antibiotic we talk about. Also, this one. So. In, in organic chemistry, we have what we call trivial names, just like this one. This is the trivial name of this. The IUPAC name of this, following the rule, is going to put this compound as ethane, ethane, one, two, three, ethane, ethane, as some people may call it, ethane, one, two, ethane, one, two, diol. So molecule with two OH are usually called diol, especially when the OH are next to each other. So this is diol in this case, where it doesn't have to be next to each other, but in this case, they are next to each other and it is called diol. But the trivial name that is like, uh, I mean, it's like saying nickname. So the nickname of this compound is glycol. In, chem in organic chemistry, instead of saying nickname, we just say trivial names. Well, trivial as you, as the name implies so we just give it to it to the compound not because it is the right name but i mean it doesn't follow 
IUPAC nomenclature or the IUPAC naming system, but it's just a name that has been that have been used in the past and it continues to remain. So uh, it's called trivial names and we have them. It's so just like this one, we call this isopropanol. Isopropanol. The right name of this, the IUPAC name for this would be uh, propane propane 2 all because the hydroxyl group is on the second carbon atom in this molecule. It's called isopropanol. It's mostly used in the industry as solvents. It's poisonous, but it's, it remains uh, an important solvent, especially in the industry. And we have benzyl alcohol. So don't make mistake, this is not phenol. You can see there is a carbon atom that is bearing the OH group. So in the case of phenol, the OH group is directly attached to the benzene ring. But in this case, the OH group is attached to a carbon that is then attached to a benzene ring. So this is called benzyl alcohol. Benzyl alcohol. So the next thing I'm going to talk about uh, is types. Is the, the, we have different types of alcohol. Types of alcohols. So we can have the primary alcohol the secondary alcohol and we can also have the tertiary alcohol just based on the alkyl groups that are attached that are that is connected to the carbon atom bearing the OH group so as you can see this is the carbon atom bearing the OH group here this is the OH group and this carbon is called the alpha carbon because it's the one that is immediate uh, the carbon that is immediately next to the OH group. It's called the alpha carbon. And how many other alkyl groups are connected to this alpha carbon? That is the question you ask yourself. And the answer to that will determine if this alcohol is a primary alcohol, a secondary alcohol, or a tertiary alcohol. And to simplify this, if you have just one, just one alkyl group attached to the alpha carbon, that is the carbon carrying the uh, the hydroxyl group then you say that is a primary alcohol if the if there are two alkyl groups that are attached to the carbon atom bearing the oh group then you say you have a secondary alcohol if the carbon atom carrying the oh group has three other carbons i mean three other alkyl groups attached to that same carbon then you say you have the tertiary alcohol like if you have something like this something like this So this is a methyl group, methyl group, methyl group, and you have the OH group. So this is a tertiary alcohol because there is a carbon atom here. And to this carbon atom, you have another carbon atom, another carbon atom, another carbon atom. If you break this down, you actually have CH3, COH, CH3, and CH3. So you have three methyl groups. Three, met three methyl groups attached to the carbon bearing the OH group. So in this case, you say you have a tertiary alcohol. A tertiary alcohol. And this is actually called tert butanol. It's called tert butanol. Let me write it here. This part may have cut out. Uh, so this is called tert butanol so this is a tertiary alcohol and so that is where i will stop for today we'll continue in the next lecture so, so um, in the next lecture i'll be talking about uh, the acidity of alcohol before we talk about the preparation and the reactions so i'll see you in the next lecture and again my name is abio dani foshe thank you for listening and i thank you for your time thank you and see you in the next lecture bye